Welcome to this video for the full moon here today as I'm recording this it is the 28th it is oh wow look at that it's 221 almost 222 here on the 28th this has been kind of a long time coming with this video I've been working on setting up my my videos, I have two cameras here. So I have my card camera so we can really get a good look at my cards and me shuffling and the setup here. And also my main camera here. Um, so this has, like I said, this has been um, something I've been working on for the last day, trying to set up video and audio and I'm having sinking, um, sinking issues with the audio and the video. So I've had to change my preferred idea which was having a a picture in picture kind of thing so the main the main camera here being the main the main uh, video with the the camera or the the card camera being in the corner however the program that I use for that is I guess just having a hard time keeping everything situated I'm sure it's because of my relic dinosaur of a mac uh macbook that i have so what we're doing now is i've shifted so i can move on with my life <laughs> and i've shifted this so we have it um we have a side by side view here so i'm actually going to be uploading a separate video with just the main camera and also a separate video with just this uh camera video as well so anyway without further ado let's get into this i hope you like the new setup i hope that this sound works for you i'm going to try to keep my my face not too close and not too far away from the the microphone um and we are going to be getting into our full moon readings now this is very different than what i've done before and something that has that came to me kind of a little fluttering butterfly about do, working with birth days or or numbers and dates and stuff and it just didn't quite hit until um these last couple days and so what we're going to be doing is going by your birthday so if your birthday is between the first and the fifth that first reading is for you the 6th through the uh, 11th then the 12th through the 16th the 17th through the 21st the 22nd through the 26th and then the 27th through the 31st so we have six reads I will be doing um, a couple of other ones but we are going to be doing this one first and each of these six readings will incorporate some different cards um, I have dragon fae uh, sacred geometry archangel oracle i have archetypes hidden worlds um and then we are going to get into um for sure what we're going to be using is the moonology uh and light seers tarot and the dreams of gaia tarot so um Next, I want to get into what this full moon is all about. And right off the top, I want to send you over to Tanya Gabrielle. She is a astro numerologist. So she combines astrology with numerology, which is super awesome. And I highly recommend subscribing to her and watching all of her videos. But um, definitely go and watch the video about the full moon if you haven't already. There's a lot of really cool stuff stuff going on with this full moon in um in libra where when where their sun is in aries both are at eight at eight degrees and um so of course they need to be at the same the same degree to 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 have the sun directly behind the moon to illuminate the moon perfectly for the full moon but then there's also a lot of other things going on um with our planets with the in in eight degrees so we have a stellium happening but again i don't want to take up time in this video um 
uh, trying to describe or or get into that because it's really her Tanya's thing and again I just really really encourage you to watch her video on the full moon for um for all of that information but the eights the infinity um symbol takes a a front and center uh um center stage there because everything is with the eights with the infinity symbol with um getting into the energy of our infinite nature connecting with our souls being strong in that energy being in that that zero point of the infinity symbol and having that balance and so really the beginning of this year has been about stabilizing and getting a nice solid firm smooth foundation for ourselves and sifting out anything that doesn't belong and getting things in a in a way that keeps us and gets us stable gets us into a place where we can receive we can connect we can heal we can make connections in our lives so we can put things together for myself this month it's been a lot of clearing out space and energies that pull from me and then also connecting deeply with the akashic records with my past lives and and going into very deep healing for myself so i can um really kind of solidify things moving forward and i know that that's been um maybe not the exact theme for theme for everybody but it's been about let's get things more stable let's find a peace let's let's really bring in our authenticity and tap into what makes us tick what fuels our fire what are our passions who are we what needs to be healed what are we in fear of what holds us back like all of these things all of these components that that make for a bumpy road and then what do we need to smooth that this um full moon I started feeling with the past full, with our last full moon, um, honestly, literally. And I talked about this full moon and this chunk of time between the last full moon and this full moon being really, really intense, very pivotal, a lot of big changes and revelations and, and stuff coming up in this time period. And boy, Yes, it's definitely been that for us. So, um, so anyway, without further ado, I want to get into the readings um, for us here. And what we're going to be doing is first getting into our first set of birthdays, the first through the fifth. So that is coming up for some of you here in the month of April. And um, so again, this is for anybody. This first part here is um, going to be for anybody for that first through fifth. So let's get into it with our first read, starting with our moonology for the first through the fifth, starting now. Okay, here we go. Oh, well, there we go. <laughs> <laughs> a fire was this say a fiery climax approaches well 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 we got the full moon in aries um starting us off with this uh first read for the the uh the first through the fifth and a fiery climax approaches well looks like here with this reading we're going to be um i'm hearing transitions more transitions happening um with this with this full moon and this last week um for your birthday is first through whoa <laughs> whoa for the birthday is first through fifth um I'm hearing something 
something approaches something fiery or not something is transition conclusions something about that um revelations understandings putting all the pieces together that sort of thing very interesting energy here and I'm just really being guided to shuffle this around. A fiery climax approaches. Hmm. I have a feeling that this could go in different ways. In different ways I'm seeing. Like... You really have the opportunity to dictate what's going to happen here and of course you know law of attraction all that good stuff we definitely have um a role to play in the way our lives work right but i'm seeing this like it really really matters here we have the three of earth coming in next Uh, masculine and feminine coming in after that. I'm going to take this down here. So I'm going to move it right there. I'm not going to forget about that. We're just going to move this here. Next card is the child. Wow. Is that like just way too bright? Might be way too bright to see that picture there. Um... Yeah, let me back it up a little bit. There we go. <laughs> it's just, it's very light. And the the light, here, let me see if I can do this. There we go. There we go. I'm figuring it out. So we have the three of earth, masculine, feminine, and the child. Whoa, 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 whoa here. And one more, the Ace of Earth with that gorgeous dragon. Well, okay. So... I'm being guided to our light seers tarot and we're going to pull cards here as well to go underneath these four cards that we pulled in order. So I'm hearing to let's do that before I start to try to dissect the beast to go ahead and do this first. So I have a full picture to work with. So let's do that. Oops. There's our first card, the devil. Interesting. So we have the devil coming in underneath our three of earth. And for what's coming in underneath our uh, masculine and feminine is um, six of swords. Underneath our divine masculine and feminine card. And again, that's kind of bright there. I just do that for now. There we go. So, six of swords underneath that masculine and feminine card. Let's see what we get underneath the child. The nine of wands comes in underneath the child card. Interesting. And then what's going to come in underneath our ace of earth is our 
Eight of Wands. Whoa. There's our magical number eight. Okay. Whoa. Very intense cards here. Okay. Let's take a second. Okay, so I'm being guided to let's get into our book here um, for this three of earth um, because this deck is different than um, I opened right up to that ace of earth. We did get that ace of earth, but it comes in fourth position. Um, so let's first get into I'm really feeling the need to get into our our three of earth card ambition sowing seeds groundwork energy investment sacrifice fertility outcomes time to make preparations risking future goals and ambitions investment sacrifice equals reward a time of restriction and adversity increased opportunity people notice commitment and dedication be sure of your motives maintain intimacy and connection so the three of earth represents a time of preparation. It is a time to sow the seeds born of thought, need, and desire in fertile soil and do what is required in order to make those seeds grow. It is a time for you to do the necessary groundwork. Remember, the outcome can only be equal to the investment you are willing to make in the here and now. So remember when I said there's something about this where it's about you have a direct influence on what happens and what what's going on here what what needs to prepare for and let's not forget our fiery um fiery climax approaches so with this it's saying let's think about what we need what continues to be in need to to prepare for um but i'm also feeling yeah, because it talks about kind of sacrificing here. Um, but it feels kind of more like instead of it being really about sacrifice, that it's more about being patient. Um, being, yeah, being patient here with this, with this energy that's coming in um, because... Things just need to get into greater balance. And I'm then being quickly directed to our um, Oh, that's interesting. Oh, that's sorry. I'm see this is an interesting <laughs> this is an interesting deck. Um the way that it's set up. It's very it's very different than a regular tarot deck. Let me just find this card because here we go. So 11 of fire is the divine, is um, masculine, feminine energy. And that's what we have here is the 11 of fire. So normally this would be like the page of fire. In this deck, she uses different, um, like the, for example, the 12 of fire is the hero. It's not the, um, the, the knight or or the um the son of of fire or of of wands so here we have um and like i said this this deck is actually both of these decks are fairly new to me but this deck is really really new to me so i'm still learning it first i thought it, it was one of the major arcana cards for some reason so anyway um so for he, for this card it's passive aggressive creation and destruction action in action masculine and feminine um and put aside gender stereotypes you're both we are both masculine and feminine masculine energy serves to protect feminine energy serves to nurture too much of one, not enough of the other, possibly. Time to evaluate and realign. Allow for the energy to increase and ebb. Embrace the energy that best suits your needs. 
So it says here, we're not going to get into everything. We're just going to touch a little bit. The 11 of fire is a balancing and realignment card. It symbolizes the importance of balancing our masculine feminine energies and to remind us that we are and always will be a mix of both. So yeah, just because like I'm a female doesn't mean I'm all feminine. I have those masculine energies or it's like the right, left, top, bottom, yin, yang kind of energies. We all do. The 11 of fires asks that we look beyond gender stereotypes to how we respond and react to day-to-day -to -day experiences. On an energetic level, our masculine aspect serves to protect self and others, while our feminine aspect serves to nurture self and others. In a simplistic society, a typical male will embody the more masculine energy than female. They are characteristic characteristically more aggressive and forceful but also very protective to those they feel the need that need protection however they are more apt to use physical force and aggression to protect the typical female however will embody more feminine energy than masculine they are characters characteristically more passive and yielding and while possessing the same desire to protect the vulnerable they will generally use diplomacy and dialogue in order to determine an option that avoids conflict. So those are very generalized, um, obviously generalized descriptions of masculine feminine. But what I'm seeing here with this three of earth and then this masculine and feminine card um, right off the bat, it's like we need to start from a more balanced situation here um, and in order to have the best kind of outcome is to take into consideration all the ways in which we... Um, We relate to others the way we we uh, put ourselves out there, that sort of thing. Um, and also releasing with this devil with this devil card. Um, this devil card always really feels to me like allowing for change to take place allowing for your higher self to come in if you can see that right there he's like he's got this kind of this guy on a like puppet on a string kind of thing he's but to me and especially in this deck it's like showing it's like look you've been tied up by certain things let me come in and help you so I'll see this card as a very much like guardian angel. I know it's a devil card, but the, but here it's like your guardian angel is saying, let me take you away from certain ideas that you have about stuff. Um, and balancing these energies, balancing these energies, moving forward in a new way allowing i'm just feeling very strongly here allowing for guidance to come in higher higher guidance with this feminine and masculine card this is really about uh, let me give you a closer look here this is really about i'm hearing the seeing your seeing your different the way in which your own personality your own way of relating to people changes and we all are like that we all have to kind of change depending on the situation we're in and who we're dealing with and all of that but it's almost like This is saying that there's been a lot of influences that have been outside of you, but but like on the the human 3D level and that it's time to open up and start new. Here's this child card that zero card is also like 
the the fool card in a in a way and um starting off fresh here um yeah this nine of wands coming in underneath the the child card is really about staking taking claim of really who you are on a soul-based level um and this <laughs> this awesome ace of ace of of earth i'm being told we want to to touch here a little bit um with this ace of earth oh where oh my goodness that earth was yeah okay oh, seriously <laughs> i can't work a book okay new beginnings goals motivation desire preparations opportunity education security potential reward potential consequences practicality and pragmatism starting anew new financial or career opportunity reward versus consequence making preparations planning for the future when the ace of earth appears in your reading it represents a time of change and new beginnings on on the career and home front this change is driven by a desire for financial security and independence for yourself for those for whom you are responsible it is time to make preparations and plans for the future so that you are not challenged or placed under stress by the changes that are coming. What do you want to do with your life? What career path allows you to both meet your responsibility and be fulfilled? Yes, yes, yes. So, and this eight of wands underneath here with this eight energy, so much eight energy, infinite energy coming through with this full moon is, again, a fiery climax approaches, let's not forget. And so a lot of this is about new, is about, so we have the, the child, the ace of earth, talking about making preparations. The, the three of earth talks about, um, you know, planting seeds, being patient. So, and then the devil is about moving on from um, illusions and what has kept us, um, you know, in a certain framework um, of limitation. So I'm really feeling here, we're, we're talking about moving on from the past, moving on from limitations, stepping in to um, authenticity. We have the eight of wands, the nine of, the nine of wands at the same time. So it's about gathering your resources, gathering your, your understanding, your awareness of yourself even. It's like, again, what do you, what do you want to do? What do you want to accomplish here? And, and it's not just about, um, you know, earning a paycheck or the, or the money simply. It's about truly starting off in a way that really honors you as, uh, as the, the, the child within the soul, the pure soul that needs to live and create from that place. Um, so this is a very, very powerful and meaningful read here for you. Um, really truly <laughs> um this this masculine and feminine uh it's this is really talking about let's let's really kind of boil it down to what makes you happy what makes you tick what really um what really lights your fire uh kind of thing and i'm really feeling like these two cards together here these two cards together um it's almost like this dragon is blowing out these um these wands here and just saying it's again i'm going back to what i said at the beginning this truly is what you want to make of it you have you have the ability you have the power to 
decide by balance by getting into balance so lastly what i'm hearing here is the need to clear energy the need to clear energy here is really what needs to happen that there's been situations people experiences even traumas in the past that have kept you or that has made you reluctant to um, kind of show the world the real you to and yourself to just let it get let it like let your freak flag fly is kind of what I'm hearing and and I think that you're gonna get to a point where you're just gonna be like yeah enough is enough we need to be at this point here where like I'm ready to make whatever changes so it could be that that you know it's a it's a job that just drains your energy and even though you may do stuff on the side you may do some creative stuff i'm seeing like jewelry making or painting or even working with tarot cards or um gardening i'm seeing like all these different things that maybe you even collect money for um, or maybe you just do for fun, but that that there's something in the way that needs to be cleared. And it could just be, um, you know, past experiences, like I said before, that need to be that need to be cleared here and that your guides and guardians specifically your guardian angel is pushing and pulling and guiding you to a place where it's like. I'm kind of also feeling like, like you've told yourself, like, I know, like, when the time is right or when I find the person who to, to, to be my, my guide, my healer, my shaman, um, I'm going to know that sort of thing. I hear that a lot with people as they are find me. They'll be like, I've just been waiting for something for someone I've known. Like it's something's going to happen. And then I found you or you, you know, in whatever way. Um, and I feel that it's kind of like that here too, that it's like, I've, it's like, I've been preparing to get to a point to really level up to really dig deep in healing and in energy work and meditation and in cultivating this stuff to see what's next it's kind of like i think yeah yeah that's definitely part of it here too it's like this fiery climax approaches is really more like all of the energy that's been building to like um it's like a um like a pressure like a water thing like a water spout or something i'm trying to think of what that's called but it's like all the pressures coming 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 and you're just like waiting and like going i know something's gonna it's going to happen where I am going to get that motivation. It is going to come in for me in a certain way so I can then start putting stuff into greater alignment. So I think that's what this card is telling us from the jump is you have been doing work. You have been preparing on on things on different levels like you've been working on your spirituality you've been following your guidance you've been going down different rabbit holes there you've been making certain adjustments in your life maybe you've even um had uh, one or a few mushroom trips or even um have done or will consider or are considering doing something like ayahuasca a, a much more intense um and that they're or you know just changing your diet what you watch who you hang out with what it's like you've you've kind of retreated into this like i'm changing myself in a way where it's like i'm backing up from things and then i'm going to create a new path but it's like getting this like snake energy like okay we're going into the into our den and we're gonna think about where, what we're doing and shed our skin and we're gonna move forward um in a different way okay so let's continue on here because this is again new beginnings planting seeds starting off fresh um uh the child coming to say you know 
this is going to be one of those pivotal times. This full moon, full moon energy, this last week of the the month for the third month of 2021 and going into our fourth month with April, going into a whole new season with spring, really starting new here, really wanting you to to take it all the way back when you go in that den take it all the way back to like child times to like what you connected to as a child what your what what felt magical what was can maybe considered fantasy like i'm really feeling that i do have a meditation that's for healing and connecting integrating back with your inner child i really recommend that and cord cutting i have again an ebook and a meditation for cord cutting i highly suggest and just generally here before we move on um the i'm gonna get into uh the tools this is what i'm feeling here we need to get into our tools our tools cards for the um our archetypes i'm, I'm feeling that that's what's needed right here so let's do that but anyway i feel that getting into uh something with or really tapping into our um the child the the that energy is going to be helpful the inner child connecting um getting into a place where you're it's not just balancing out divine feminine and divine masculine it's balancing out your adult with your inner child that's big time and this ace of earth coming in directly after that child card is really saying this is about starting from a place of of really from the from the beginning like really really like if you're gonna build something let's really make sure this we're starting off from a foundation that's as pure as it can be it's super authentic really tapped in um, that sort of thing. Okay, let's see what we get here for our tool card. What? Oh, here we go. The prayer. Oh my goodness, the prayer. What was I just saying? We're talking. We're talking about connecting with our, with our guides and our guardians. And what do we pull out? The prayer. For our tool that literally looks like a um, uh, a guardian angel there, doesn't it? Oh, again, really bright with the light. Let me try to wait. I'm messing this up entirely. <laughs> there we go. Actually, I think it was okay. It's just awkward with these uh, round cards. I love the round cards, but. It is kind of awkward. There we go. So let's find our prayer card. Page 195. <laughs> Open straight to, whoa. Jeez. Open straight to, I can't even show you. Nope, that's to the healer on page 111 first i saw the good lord here first i saw the number the the page number wow this is kind of ridiculous there we go i was like oh page 111 it's the healer <laughs> um so page 195 i'm having a hard time with books today the prayer what is prayer um oh let's start here the worship the reverence the um homage is that what that says man that's it's written in red and very tiny what is prayer when we sorry when are we in a state of prayer and when are we not to whom or what do we pray Archetypally, the practice of prayer has been with us since the dawn of time as a remedy for the omni 
omnipresent self-centered thinking that spins us towards illusion. Prayer leads us beyond our ego as we move from our little story to the big one. Some say we are in a state of prayer anytime we are not the center of our own thoughts. Others say prayer is a natural result of gratitude. Perhaps it is simply surrender or service. Whatever prayer is for you, this card reminds us of its importance. Get guilt sorry get guilt get quiet <laughs> I'm sorry. get quiet low humble and soft bow and touch the ground as your heart lifts to the sky though it may be uncomfortable it is time nothing else will do wow okay what else do we have here um experiment with the act of bowing down nearly all spiritual traditions make a practice of um pros prostration and every song kiss breath word can become a prayer it is a feeling not an action consider the ancient mantra one oh my gosh Oh, um namo guru des namo. I bow to the creative consciousness within. I bow to the teacher within. And when light, offering to be of service, asking for guidance. And when dark, expecting results, self um, aggra aggrandizement. And go deeper, ask to be of service. Okay, so. This is awesome. I love this so much. This prayer card, this tool of the prayer of asking for guidance is really, um, really what, what, where the meat is at here. Um, <laughs> because, and this card here, again, this first card is like, Go to nature, go within, ground yourself, connect with Gaia, um, pray to her and to your guides, to your guardians, the whole lot of them, um, because they're ready to guide you. They're ready to guide you away from whatever illusions that have held you back. It feels like there's this whole world for you and it feels very spiritual. It feels very magical. It feels very connected to um, amazing, um, all the amazing divine counterparts that we have that we can connect to. We can connect to Gaia, our Mother Earth, and that's who I really connect to um, uh, kind of first and foremost when it comes to working with people with healing with giving messages we are of our mother earth we are her child we are um we are of the universe we are infinite we have embodied many different bodies we've had major and many incarnations not only on this on this beautiful planet but other ones for some of us as well and um but we're here now we're in these human bodies and we really have to connect and ground with our mother earth with our guides and guardians um that are all populated in this beautiful place for us and even though we cannot see everything that is around us our divine counterparts and what's interesting is that is that mother earth Gaia is everywhere um, beneath our feet in the air at nearly everything that we can we can look at um, it, it within each other our children our pets and animals just everything the elements everything everything is of nature we can be as connected or disconnected to that um, 
as we choose to be but the more connected we are to nature the better in balance we'll be with our divine feminine and, and our divine masculine and truly when we um when we boil it all down to that inner child space the inner child is that perfect blend the baby is the perfect blend of masculine and feminine they're just everything potential in everything that it, that can come from that those two hands and those two feet and those two eyes and that one heart and that soul and that body and the potentiality for a creation and connection is truly infinite for all of us and unfortunately for a lot of us as well we through through time and in space and experience experiences and society and family um we're pulled away from the magic we're pulled away from ourselves and our inner knowing let's take a look at her face let's just take a look here she is with this nine of wands she is so into the feels of where she's at she's been through a lot but she has always like had this inner compass guiding her to the future and she's done a lot of work here at showing me and this is really um this is meant to be i'm hearing your your past your present and your future and to look to your past to those moments where even though things may have been difficult even though you may have been lost like what do i do things are really tough i feel like i'm going around in circles like what do i believe in like i feel like i've had evidence of certain things but what is real and then there has been times where you have had this like this stable this like I know there's something more and I just need to be patient for it and you are on your you're you're on your way you're allowing this card always shows me somebody who's ready to be guided this card coming in directly after your devil card here just shows how ready we are to move in a new direction and that's really what this is about but this prayer card again is coming in to remind us we don't do this alone we do this with our guides we ask for help and then we go as guided so it's about surrendering to the process and maybe that's what this fiery climax is all about it's about these inches these steps that you've been taking towards really trusting and living in a faith living through faith um and it's it's been like i feel that that up and down with like controlling and allowing and controlling and allowing so we really want to get away from control because if we're in a prayerful state if we're in a meditative and prayerful state we're surrendering our need to know and control and to have a hand in the the outcome we're releasing everything and that's really what this is about let's release and receive for our future by by releasing um our need to control releasing the need to be in to be the one in power to be the one with the force the force is all around us the force is the universe the force is gaia the force is our soul we as humans need to get out of the way and allow for that force to come through and then work through us and ride the wave instead of being in the riptide okay lastly we're gonna do a uh hidden world oracle this has been a really cool read i'm stoked on this <laughs> i really really am i hope that this is speaking to you offering you some validation comfort understanding and advice um to help you through this energy through this time um of transition um so let's see what we got here
Sacred Journey, card number 30. Sacred Journey, take a look there. Um, introversion, Seeker, Self-Knowledge, wow. <laughs> uh, these cards, I tell you, you can't really plan this. Card number 30. Sacred journey, introversion, seeker, self-knowledge. You have walked alone for some time now. You have turned inwards to that great path that lies inside of us all and have taken its many tributaries into the soul of your own self. You have discovered the things so many hide from themselves and you have brought them to the surface, examined them and found their beauty and their sorrows. And after knowing them, integrating them, have gone deeper still. Within that silent place at the heart of you, there is another temple, the temple of your soul, where your precious, most sec secret heart has laid and waiting for you, a sleeping beauty, a wise wizard at the gate of your truth, and you have kissed your soul and accepted the truth of yourself. With this comes a reawakening and a return to the world. Now your stillness and repose, which all the world has seen but not understood will begin to express the wisdom it found at the heart of you too many journey outwards expecting to find the answers outside in gurus and teachers and places and other people and medicines and therapies and all have their part to play but if we do not seek the chalice within we cannot drink from the cup of our soul the crystalline waters of the self and this friend you have done the journey you have taken within has been challenging and full of risk, but you have made it to the center of you. And now that you know what treasure lies within, you can rise again and re-enter the world and know fully who you are and why you are here. Illumination mantra. My time of deep quiet leads to personal breakthroughs. Oh my God, yes. <laughs> Truly, to round out this read, um, that this couldn't be literally any better. The sacred journey coming in after the prayer card really to tell us um, the, wh what you've done already has been a lot. Um, whatever it's been to get you to where you are now, whatever it's been. It's been a lot. You've been through a lot. You've recognized. You've you've had your revelations. You've done a lot of um, of digging deep and understanding the whys of things. I feel that you've done some forgiveness, but there's still some that needs to be done there. There's still connections that need to be um, seen. There's still patterns that need to be pulled apart. There's still um, healing and wounds that need to be tended to. There's still um, karmic attachments that you need to understand for this life and why they're there. But you have done so much and you have figured all this out and now truly is the time to to like to really like push on the gas to really see that what you've done even though you may be tired and you may be like i really thought that there'd be more that you know either comes in to support me or you know that my positive attitude and whatever like law of attraction stuff that i've been wanting it's like uh, it's, maybe it hasn't been everything that that we've desired up to this point but but that's only because there's still energy is locked in the framework of your physical body your energetic body your spiritual body that need to be uncovered and that's where you're you are now let's not forget this is about connecting to deeper higher um uh uh divine counterparts and getting back to a state of being where you can truly um get back into that energy with you know of the beginning of the child and start from there again i highly recommend 
um, my cord cutting ebook and the meditations as well as that one for the inner child. It keeps popping up again and again. Ask your guides. Um, ask to be guided and you will be guided. Then it's up to you to go in that direction. And I'm going to round this out by saying from the very beginning, this feels like what's coming up is truly up to you as to what like there's so many like it's it's time to it's a new time beginning um and your perception your energy your uh how you feel about yourself and moving forward and you know really deeply connecting with your soul can go in different ways and it's truly up to you where you want to you know follow that I would just say to begin with keep it simple um start with these meditations and I really think that they'll help you um move forward so go as guided with that, but just know you're definitely in a in a time of transition um, in on a deeper level coming up for you with this full moon energy. So just really try to tap in with those energies for the full moon and um, and yeah, that's it. Thank you so much for being here and watching this read for the first through the fifth. 